Good evening. We're glad that you're joining us online this evening. We want to uh, say we, we had a great service this morning in our parking lot. We appreciate everybody being here for that. Uh, very encouraging to see everyone that was there here for our service this morning. I want to remind you again of those that we have on our prayer list. Uh, I want you to continue to remember Donna Johnson. She has a, another procedure, rather another treatment coming up on the 17th of this month. Scott Ball, he has some upcoming uh, doctor's appointments, so remember him. Got a good report on Donald Ferguson. He's doing a lot better from the coronavirus and his family. All the others are doing good. So the Leslie family, we mentioned them this morning. <coughs> Sandy and uh, Sarah tested positive early on about Tuesday of last week. Uh, Eric and Anna tested positive on Friday. Mason is now showing some symptoms, so uh, continue to remember that entire family. But they are tolerating the medicines well and, and doing pretty good, just some coughing and things like that. Fallon Bell is, is doing well with it, and she is returning back to school this week. Uh, Geneva Harris, continue to remember her. And also remember Jessica and uh, new baby arriving on this Thursday. So uh, if you would remember them, we'd appreciate your prayers for, for their safe arrival. First Psalm 453, Love Lifted Me. Let's sing. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by His love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows His will obey. And He, your Savior, wants to be, be saved to else could help love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me amen so before we have the scripture reading and our opening prayer be number 71. 71, as the deer. Sing both verses of the song. <clears throat> Sing. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You desire and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver. Only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You 
strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. This evening's scripture reading will come from Psalms, chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of the death, I will fear no evil. You, For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they come for me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint me. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's go to God in prayer, please. Father, we thank you so very much for this, this time to be around you, to, to be here on this your day, the Lord's day, and to worship you, the one and only living God. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity. We thank you for all that you do for us. And we thank you, Father, for our lives, just the lives that you give us. We thank you for your son, Jesus. For with him, we have the hope of heaven. Without him, we are lost. Father, we pray that you will hear our prayers. We know you do. And we pray, Father, that you'll answer our prayers. We know you do that, too. We have many on our our sick list, our prayer list, that are in need of your healing hand, your touch. And we pray, Father, that that will happen. Father, we have many that, that are, are separated from their lo loved ones, from travel and the ability to travel. And we pray, Father, that you'll lift spirits up. Because with you, we have to remember that with you, we have everything. And so we are never alone. And we thank you for that. Father, be with us now as we hear a portion of your word brought to us. Help us to pay attention, listen to what you have to say, and take it out into the world so others may know the, the joy that we have. This prayer we pray in your Son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Next song, 679. 679, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. All right. We'll sing verses 1 and 4 of this song. <clears throat> Let's sing. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take Him at His word Just to rest upon His promise Just to know the saith the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him How I prove Him more and more Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust Him more I'm so glad I learned to trust Thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that Thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. 911 will be your invitation song, 911. <clears throat> song before we have our lesson, number 300. 300. Praise Him, praise Him. Amen. Yeah. We sing this song with Andrew will bring a lesson for the afternoon. Sing verses 1 and 3.
Let's sing. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O oh, earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, loud with Hosanna ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Amen. Got it on me. Good evening. I'm glad you could join us tonight. If you will, turn with me to Psalm 23. It's a very well known Psalm 23. It will be there this evening. I encourage you um, to come to our teen class or the kids' class on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Um, Andy is working on getting it on the computer so you can watch it. Um, if you do not want to come in, um, I hope that you get the opportunity to do that. Psalm, the 23rd Psalm is one of the best known passages in Scripture. We agree? It's only six verses long, and yet in those short six verses, David describes God with such depth and power that entire books couldn't even touch it. In those verses, David tells us truths about what God meant to him and what he can mean to us. And one of the most important truths he declared was this, the Lord is my shepherd. Until you understand that simple truth, nothing else in Scripture makes any difference. What David was describing here was a God who really cared for him. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. He's not a shepherd. He's not the shepherd. He's my shepherd. Years ago, someone told of a dream he had. In his dream, he moved among the temples of ancient Greece. Near one of them, he met a priest and began to talk to him. Pointing to people approaching the temple, the dreamer said to the priest, I suppose these people honor and love their God. And the priest just laughed. Honor? Love? What do you mean? They fear him because he may destroy them. But love? Whoever loved a God. But, said the dreamer, don't these people seek to know the will of their God? And the priest said, he does not work by will. He may smite with illness, curse with barrenness, and with disaster. No one can know the mind of God. One may only appease his anger. You see, that's the way a lot of folks think of God. They see Him as uncaring, even cruel, to be feared and avoided. But not David. David declared, the Lord is my shepherd. It's personal for David. This is his God. God was his shepherd. And because of that, David knew he was safe. Psalm chapter 59 verse 16 says, I will sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning. For you have been to me a fortress and a refuge in the day of my distress. Psalm 61 verse 2 and 3. I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. You see, you see, this was the key to David's being, a man after God's own heart. David wasn't a Sunday go to a meeting guy. He didn't just show up for an hour on Sunday and live however he wanted to the rest of the week. David was sold out for God because he knew that his Lord wasn't just a God who was way up there or who didn't really care. The God that David loved, loved him back. 
And so David wrapped his life around this God. David's attitude toward God reminds me of a story of a Sunday school teacher who asked her class if any of them could quote the entire 23rd Psalm. A little girl, a little girl raised her hand and she said, um, she said, the Lord is my shepherd and that's all I want. And that's the best thing you'll hear all year. The Lord is your shepherd and he should be all you want. But that does raise the question, is the Lord your shepherd? Is he all you want? Until you figure that out, you'll miss out on what God has to offer. And one of the most important things God has to offer you is this. He's got a plan for you. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. In Psalm 23, verses 2 and 3. God knows where you need to be. And He's going to get you there. Remember in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. Now there are those who will tell you this promise doesn't apply to you. It applied to the Jeremiah's day of the Jews. And that's always annoyed me because I think they're wrong. I'm convinced this promise was for all of God's chosen people, including you. The reason I know they're wrong is because Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God has a plan for you. He has good works prepared in advance just for you to do. My Uncle Brian tells me that the reason many folks reject this promise out of Jeremiah is because there are prosperity preachers who use the promise from Jeremiah to convince people into thinking that God intends to make them rich or successful. But in reality, when God said, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future, Judah was about to be led away into captivity. They'd been a bad people, and God was about to punish them for their bad behavior. But even when God was punished them, He was still saying, I don't want to hurt you. I have a plan for you. I have a plan to give you hope in the future. God still wanted to be their shepherd, even when they were being punished for disobedience. God always has a plan for His people. God always has a destination marked out for us. A destination where we can have a hope in the future. It may not be a destination where we'll be rich and famous and successful, but that's not the point. When God says He has a plan for you, what He's saying is that He's giving you a reason to exist. He's giving you a purpose for your life. When the Lord is your shepherd, you know your life will not be wasted. You may not end up being rich or famous or successful, but it will matter that you live because God will make sure that your life matters. William Barclay once said, There are two great days in a person's life, the day we are born and the day we discover why. God says, Follow me and I'll show you why you were born. But here's the deal. In order for your life to be worthwhile, you've got to follow Him. He knows where you need to go, but if you don't follow Him, you may end up where you don't want to be. About 15 years ago, in eastern Turkey, some shepherds had taken a break to eat their breakfast. Apparently, they weren't watching things very closely because one of their sheep wandered too close to a cliff and fell to his death. Now, sheep tend to follow their shepherds, but if the shepherd's not around, they'll follow other sheep. And that's what happened here. When that one sheep fell over the cliff, 1,500 other sheep followed and 400 of them died, and many of them were injured. They died and were injured because they followed a sheep, not a shepherd. They followed that other sheep because they figured, hey, maybe he knows where he's going, right? But he didn't. And that's what happens to Christians often. They take their eyes off of their shepherd and they want to pay attention to the experts, the important people, people of influence, people who are often just sheep like us. Now, is that a bad thing? Maybe not. Maybe it is. But they need to find out where they're going. You don't want to be let off a cliff. Now here's the deal. I can't trust other sheep sometimes. They're only guessing about where I should be going. They don't understand life the same way God does. I mean, they're not necessarily evil or deceptive, but I can't trust them because they really don't know where they're going. And I really don't know what I'm going when, unless I follow a shepherd. So I was working on tonight's sermon, a question occurred to me. If God knows what lies ahead and He wants to lead in a path that is best for me, why do I have such a problem trusting God? I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me, you see, because I don't know what lies ahead like God does. When life begins to fall apart, we get scared, we panic, right? We give up sometimes. We have to look to our shepherd. That's why the Bible repeatedly tells me, trust God, wait on God, believe God. 
And that's why the Bible repeatedly tells us things like, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In Psalm 56, 3. Cast all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. In 1 Peter 5. And in Philippians chapter 4, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The main question is this, do I trust God? Do you trust me? That's what God is all about, and that's what the 23rd Psalm is all about. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the, shallow, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Someone once said, when life gets hard, you do not need reasons. You need comfort. You do not need some answers. You need someone. And God does not come to us with an explanation. He comes to us with His presence. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If you have a need tonight, please text us, give us a call. We'll be happy to help you in any way that we can as we stand and as we sing. Bring Christ your broken life, so marred by sin. He will create a new, make whole again. Your empty, wasted years, He will restore. And your iniquities, remember no Savior of us all, Almighty Friend, His presence shall be ours unto the end. Without Him life would be how dark, how dream, but with Him morning breaks and Thank you, Andrew, for that lesson. We appreciate that very much. Um, you know, there are times when uh, song leaders and uh, and preachers they will uh, coordinate the songs of the you know that they're going to sing, and then there's times where uh, you know you just come up with a list and and you go with it. And uh, that was the case today or this evening. Um, but I sang a song that's that was entitled "As the Deer," and and the words of that song said, uh, "You alone." are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. And then he goes on in his lesson, and he talks about trust, and I sing a song also that says, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word." And I will testify to this, that most of the time, it happens when you don't coordinate. And uh, sometimes God just works it out. And that's what he did this evening. Yeah. Thank you for that lesson. Very good. Please. Listen, pay attention to the Remind out because that's where you're getting your messages and uh, reach out to one another. Call one another, reach out, and, uh, and do that work. Again, Andrew mentioned the classes. We are having some classes for our teenagers as well as for our young folks. So uh, come and participate in that. The, the auditorium is big and they're having that teen class in here and we'll be happy to have you participate in that. Uh, adults, yes, so come and, and be a part of that, certainly. Uh, that that's, takes place at 9 o'clock at the current time on, on Sunday morning. So remember that. We'll close with uh, the sweet by and by, 878. We'll sing one verse there and then we'll close in prayer. Let's sing. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. Let's pray together. 
Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that, that you are our shepherd and Lord, that you allow us to be your children. We're so thankful for this opportunity we have together together to spend time and worship to thee. And Lord, as we separate, we ask that you would go with us, that you would help us to reach out to others of this congregation, to fill the needs that they have and to look for opportunities to serve you. We're so thankful for, for Andrew and the job that he's doing for us and we thank you for him, Lord, and for just every, each and every member of our congregation, for the encouragement that they give to us, for the help that they offer. We're just so thankful for each and every member. We know that we have those on our prayer list. We'd ask that you would fill the needs of those that might be in, in need at this time, that you would be with those who are ministering care to them. We're, we're praying for those that have this coronavirus and may they continue to do well with it. We ask that you be with each of them, give them comfort and give them strength to get through this and, and the times that they need it. Lord, we know that we sometimes sin, we fall short. Forgive us for many sins that we may have and help us to have a forgiving spirit to those that we come in contact with each and every day. Continue with us, guide us and guard us in Christ's precious name. Amen.